Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show, coming to you from Disney's Flying Fish at the Boardwalk Resort. I'm your host, Pete Werner, and uh, today I'm joined by John Sakari, who is on the uh, uh, camera, and uh, by a special guest who actually won an auction with one of our Gift Kids the World's auction, Erin Jenkins, and she's going to be joining us for this review. Just a reminder before we get started, this show, along with all the content we produce, is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. So if you like our content, please consider booking your next Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, vacation through Dreams Unlimited. You'll get the services of a phenomenal agent who will help you with every part of the trip planning process, and it doesn't cost you any more than if you book through Disney directly. So please, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. All right, for my appetizer, I'm get, I get the same thing every time I come here. And I just can't help myself because it's always really good. And this time, absolutely no different. Um, I started out with the slow roasted pork belly, which has a spiced apple slaw, um, a potato, uh, uh, almost like a hush puppy with Tillamook cheese in it. Um, and the pork belly has a cherry gastrique uh, over top. Um, and those of you that have watched my reviews of Flying Fish in the past know what I'm going to say next. It's meat butter. We called it meat butter the very first time we reviewed this. I've called it meat butter every time I've been back to review this restaurant. And I have to be honest, not that it's ever bad was particularly good this time. Um, pork belly was very tender. The cherry gastrique uh, added a really nice flavor to it, but it didn't overpower the flavor of the pork. Um, and then when you get the crunch of the uh, spiced apple slaw in there with it, amazing. And that, and that hush puppy, oh my God, was so, so good. So uh, that dish, is $18. Worth every penny. I'm getting one to take home. Okay, tonight I had the lobster bisque. Um, it comes with uh, sambuca and chive oil. It was very rich and creamy. Um, it could definitely taste a little bit of the tomato and the ba um, the oil. It was, you know, mixed very nicely in there. And it had very um, heavy cream. The lobster was fresh, um, so it was very tender. And the price for this appetizer was $18. And I, like Pete, I would get um, another to take home with me, another bowl or the recipe. That would be fantastic. Uh, I looked at the appetizers, and because I don't eat seafood, nothing really uh, got my attention. But on the kids' menu, there was a chicken noodle soup. And I asked them, can that be an adult thing? And they said yes. And they kind of, the, the chef then came out and said, can I, I realize it's for an adult. Can I put some fresh herbs in it? Let me tell you, that was some great chicken noodle soup. Finished the whole thing. And, you know, you don't think like parsley or whatever herbs were in there maybe were uh, do the heavy lifting, but it really made that chicken soup delicious. The chicken that was in it was tender. The noodles were not overcooked. The broth was delicious. If it's a sign of what's to come, you know what? Go for the chicken noodle soup. Ask them for the adult version. All right. So for tonight's dinner, um, I know the gentleman I was with, Pete and John, are both like chicken and meat. So I decided to try the seafood dishes here um, because they're supposed to be called flying fish. And that's what they're supposed to be known for is the seafood section. So I went with the um, plancha seared scallops. Um, and I know they're going to talk about their dishes in a few minutes. Um, just to let you know, the scallops, while they were cooked very well, um, they had that nice texture, uh, crust texture on the outside. Um, 
tender on the inside. However, they were overly salted. Um, and I'm not sure what happened, but normally scallops should be bland tasting and they should be picking up the flavor of the food around them. And the, they, were, they were put on a bed of savory grits with fresh corn, um, chopped bell red peppers, a little bit of onion, and that actually tasted better, I think, than the scallops. So I, I know I tried to mix it up together, but once again, it was just a mouthful of salt. So I don't know, I hope maybe next time I come down here, it might be a little different, um, but I wouldn't recommend trying the scallops at this point. And the price for that dish was $51. With, this, with the scallop dish, they offered a little side of um, medium-sized uh, shrimps. And the one thing was the shrimps were very well cooked. Um, they were fresh. However, they were missing. They were lacking a little bit of lemon um, that could have squirted on them, give a little bit of enhanced flavor to it. Uh, so it was it was a decent dish. But I, you know, I said it just it's missing that little extra with either a butter or a lemon or even a um, cocktail sauce would have been nice with that. All right, for my main course, I got the filet mignon, which was $59. Uh, comes with asparagus on a bed of a sweet onion risotto uh, and uh, finished with a truffle sauce. And again, this is a go-to dish for me. It's, I mean, I, I don't eat seafood, so you know, I, I have to choose non-seafood items. And this place never, ever disappoints. It took a taste of John's chicken, uh, which was out of this world. It was so good. This filet mignon, again, I, uh, my, my usual test with a filet mignon, I want to say this was a 10 ounce filet, I think, eight or 10 ounce. Um, if I can cut it with a fork, it was prepared correctly and it's a good piece, piece of meat. I don't even know why they bother giving you the steak knife. It's pointless. It's pointless. You don't need it. You don't need it. Just the fork went right through it like a hot knife through butter. Um, the truffle sauce is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's sweet. Got a little, little, uh, little tang to it. Um, combined with the sweet onion risotto. Uh, just an amazing flavor profile, uh, very unique. Uh, now, I, I, I just, you know, we just did uh, Citrico's not too long ago, had a filet mignon there that was very good. Um, I have to say, I think this one is better. I have to say, I think this one is better, um, mainly because of that sweet onion risotto. Uh, it adds something to it that is just, just sublime. Just sublime. It was wonderful. Well worth the money. So I ordered the, just trying to find it here on the menu, organic chicken is what it's called. Uh, parsnip puree, roasted beets, cracked pistachios, sauce supreme, $38. This was a chicken breast with the little bone on the end. They call airline, like an airline chicken breast style. Absolutely delicious. I wanted to taste that sweet onion risotto, so I got that on the side. This chicken... And I know I go on and on about white meat chicken. And I always look for it to just to be tender and juicy and hot. It was all that. But there's a flavor that permeated through the chicken breast. I, I can't even tell you what it is. It was just delicious. It was almost, I want to say, peanut-based flavor, maybe? Not peanut butter. I can't explain it. It's just, it was absolutely delicious. The beets also, which if you like carrots or steamed carrots, you would love these beets. They just had a, you know, I'm not used to eating beets and parsnips. It was like eating a carrot, but just a nice flavor. Uh, not overly salty, not overly sauced. And then the sweet onion risotto, I'm, we're thinking it must be Vidalia onion. Really, really nice risotto. Be beautiful onion flavor without crunching on onions. It's just part of the risotto. So this was absolutely delicious. We're shocked here as we're all talking about because it, it seems like the non-seafood items were a hit more so than the seafood items. All right, for dessert, I had the creamy goat cheesecake. It was $13. It's a um, kind of a New York type style cheesecake. It had a thick, uh, thickness to it. It was um, a little bit of honey glaze across the top. 
And in the middle was a pistachio cake uh, made of cassius gel with fresh chopped uh, pistachios. Um, unlike the dinner entree that I had earlier, um, this was very well done. Um, I would gladly get this again. I, it was suggested to me to get the Florida Sunset, which is citrus brodo, B-R-O-D-O, fresh fruit and sweet lemon. Uh, I don't like the texture of this, but the flavor was delicious. The texture, I wanted to say a flan, but Erin said more of a merengue. Merengue? Uh, meringue. Meringue is the dance. <laughs> and that, uh, I, I guess, I just don't like the texture of that, that kind of jello type stuff, but it was a very orangey, citrus, flavorful light. She said it was tasting like, like tasting a cloud. That's what it felt like. So it was delicious, but I didn't like the... Uh, the texture. I did taste Pete's chocolate cocoa breach that he'll tell you about. Amazing. Okay, so I got the... Well, first of all, Panda didn't mention the price of his uh, uh, his dessert. It was $12 for the Florida Sunset. Uh, I did the cocoa breach, which I have done before. Um, this is chocolate overload. Uh, chocolate Bavara. <laughs> I don't know how that's pronounced. Uh, milk chocolate crunch, and a warm dark chocolate. Uh, it's almost done um, in the style of a souffle, where they pour a, a hot chocolate uh, ganache over it, and it kind of melts down through and blends with everything. Uh, this is almost like a, uh, uh, a chocolate mousse. That's the consistency of it. Um, but between... The chocolate ganache and the chocolate crunch and the chocolate mousse, it's chocolate. You gotta love chocolate. If you love chocolate, you will love this dish. Uh, $14. Um, I also got a side of uh, vanilla gelato to go with it, kind of cut the chocolate a little bit. Uh, gelato is homemade here on the boardwalk and it tasted like it. It was so good. And then we also got the coffee. We never mentioned the coffee. Um, this coffee was particularly good. Now she mentioned, our server mentioned, that um, it, it is uh, sourced very specially by someone who makes sure that it's ethical, that there are no children used uh, picking the beans, I guess. I don't know, I don't, I don't know how they do that. But whatever it was, whoever's picking the coffee, very good, very, very good co uh, coffee. Uh, we got the small press pot, that was $9. Serve three people. A large press spot uh, is eighteen dollars, um, and my cocoa breach was fourteen. In case I didn't mention that, um, so that was the, the the ending to our meal um, for three adults, no alcohol. We had uh, uh, appetizers, main course, and dessert. Uh, the total was two hundred and eighty-five dollars, which really, by signature restaurant standards, not bad for this particular meal. Not bad at all. Um, and I know I said on my Citrico's review that Citrico's had uh, moved to the front of the list for me as the best restaurant in Disney World. And I come here and I have this meal and I'm reminded how great a place this is. Um, so I'm going to say there's no daylight. There's no daylight between Citrico's and Flying Fish. They are both the best restaurants at Walt Disney World. You cannot go wrong here. I, I, I come to this restaurant all the time. Uh, so I put my money where my mouth is. Uh, it is, it's superb. Now we did learn tonight, I'll add this little bit in at the end here. Chef Tim, who has been here for many years, he was the one who reopened this restaurant, kind of turned it into what it is. Uh, Chef Tim has been promoted and he is leaving the Flying Fish. Now that makes me nervous, I'll be honest. It makes me very, very nervous. Um, but it's where he's going that has me excited. He will be uh, taking over food and beverage for Riviera, which means he'll be working with Topolino, which phenomenal restaurant, right? Only gonna get better with Chef Tim there. Uh, but also he's gonna be working with Saratoga Springs and Old Key West. Now, those are all DBC properties. Um, and, you know, uh, you probably, if you've paid any attention to our reviews over the years, Turf Club over at Saratoga Springs, food and beverage in general at Saratoga Springs is terrible. So I'm very hopeful that that's going to change with Chef Tim moving over there. And of course, Olivia's at uh, Old Key West, very hit and miss. 
hopefully a lot more hit once Chef Tim gets his hands on it. So very excited about that. But that is going to do it for our show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time with another episode of the Disney Dining Show. Have a great week, folks.